I would like to talk about the strike that happened to us uh, two years ago. It kind of affected us because I had to drop uh, my courses and I had to come from full-time to part-time. And uh, it was basically hard because we had to stay at home for approximately five to six months. And we didn't know what's going to happen to us. We have to go back to school or not. It was kind of hard. The strike really... Uh, <laughs> I wasn't happy with this strike, and uh, I, I, if I had chance, I would change my mind and I would go to the other universities. It's affected sort of the mood of the students. Really, lots of them are really kind of more bitter about the learning experience. They're not really excited about the class that they probably would have been before the strike. Now it's like, oh, I have to redo everything that I learned or already paid for and I'm paying for again to learn, so it makes them kind of mad. A lot of people ended up dropping classes, um, or if they stuck it out, then they got stuck with the debt that came with it, hoping maybe that the strike was going to end or something like that, and so they were kind of placing their bets. It was like a casino. <laughs> I've switched programs since I, my major last year because the program I was in last year, the TAs and the professors, they expressed openly um, to us that the, the, that first year grade or that class has lower averages, that anybody was let into York following the strike. Um, so there was a lot, like nobody was giving, I guess, credit to the students. They were thinking that, you know, that we're all just being let in because York was letting anybody in. So there's a lot less respect for that class, I guess that's a class of 2013, I guess, I don't know. And yeah, just basically admissions, and a lot of the students don't have appreciation anymore or don't take the TAs seriously because they're just expecting another walk, like strike and stuff. So there's a lot less faith in the faculty of the people here. It was kind of like the year that kind of set the pace for everything else. And so for it to become interrupted halfway and then not be sure exactly when you're going back to school and kind of like being in a limbo really affected like a lot of things in my life in terms of like, you know, um, wanting to go and work during the summer, having to like, you know, whether I should look for work and, you know, while I'm off school and, and waiting in this kind of like period or if I should just like you know be ready any single any day to go back to school so that's like one of the really hard things in terms of my studies like I think everything kind of got messed up like I don't know how, to, how else to say it like it was it was kind of like you know the teachers were were very lenient when we first when we went back and everything but in terms of like the work everything had to be condensed and I felt like having paid for my tuition it wasn't fair that we had to like waste or like they wasted all that time and they're still taking our tuition we don't get any money back and we're struggling to pay for school right so i think that's one of like the hardest things that we had to deal with in terms of you know the whole interruption and then we also had to like while all the other schools were finishing and then going to work right afterwards during the mm -hmm. summer period we had to like compete with them and then we also had to compete with the high school students once we go back I didn't want being on strike to affect the way that I functioned normally. Um, so then I tried to ignore the anxiety and I got really involved with a lot of arts events in the community and I started doing some small crafty things like making a puppet and I only half finished the puppet and I got to know a bunch of people from outside of school and it ended up being really good for me to do that but that was a a really difficult switch in thinking and I still would have rather not have been on strike at all.